One week ago, we started quarantining the biggest fish that I've ever had. And in this video, we're setting them loose in the 40 gallon. Buckle up. All right, so obviously I've had fish bigger than two inches, which is what the electric blue car is at right now. I mean, Kitster's already four inches, five inches, and he could go on to six inches. But the electric blue Akara is gonna be super broad, it's gonna be super thick, and it could hit eight inches, which might mean that I need to upgrade the 40 gallon tank into a 75 gallon tank. But enough wasting time, let's get this little cichlid out of here into the big tank so we can swim around. And then we gotta do a water change on the 10 gallon. And then we're gonna talk about the future of this tank, that tank, and our new water dog, I guess. <laughs> So we got all the floating plants out and we got the driftwood out. We might have to take some of the rocks out and stuff like that just to get the cichlid. But how beautiful did those floating plants look? Like, wow, they're so nice. They're so nice. And I love that in the last video, or I don't know if it was the last video for you guys, but in one of the videos, we just decided to keep the water line lower so that you can see the top and bottom of the plants. That was such a good idea. It makes it look so just densely vegetated. Is that a word? Densely planted, I think. Or I guess they're not planted. I don't know, densely floated? Uh, we finally got them in the net there. Um, Man, I, I kind of regret taking him out of here, guys. I know he's gonna get massive, but he looks so good against these brighter lights. Oh well, I guess we'll have to find something new to fill his place, am I right? All right, there's the fish. There's the net. Got a fish in a net. Go, 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 go. Go, 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 go. Go, 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 go. And he's in. Oh my goodness, look how beautiful he is. Go. Why do they always go back in that? Never fails to surprise me. Dude, go. It's okay. Why am I singing? <laughs> Almost there. Almost there. <gasps> there he is. He looks so good. All right, so obviously he's quite stressed. Understandable. <laughs> and now, look, I have duckweed in the 40 gallon. Yay. Oh. And just like every time I try to take a fish out of a tank, I have to completely break the scape apart, which is annoying, but oh well. That's, that's what you guys like, right? You guys like seeing me struggle, huh? Like, look at these stem plants. We took one fish out and all the stem plants came loose. Except for the water wisteria, which is an amazing plant. I love that plant. I said the same thing about Rotala, but whatever. Okay, Rotala's old news. This is actually kind of helpful for me though, that all these hardscape pieces and all these plants are out of here for now because it allows me to get into some crevices that I wasn't able to before in this little 10 gallon. And while we're looking, you can actually see the ghost shrimp in there have completely camouflaged to match the new brightness level. Uh, now that the floating plants are gone, and you can see the Borneo load just darkened up to match the black of that filter. And you can see that there's just no snails in here anymore. But look at this plant, I love this. This is gonna be so good for uh, growing uh, shrimp? Growing shrimp? <laughs> no. Raising shrimp, and that's java moss, I believe. And then this plant over here, Zach gave me. It's like java moss, but slightly different. Don't recall the name of it. Anyways, I'm not gonna name every plant and go through their historical background. <laughs> so we are going to work on the 10 gallon, just get some um, vacuuming done. You guys have seen that all before. So while I'm doing that, I'm gonna talk about uh, kind of the future of different tanks and expectations and stuff like that. It's very interesting. Okay, so what is the future? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> But I do have some ideas for the future. So with the electric blue Akara, the reason that we moved him out of this 10 gallon is because he passed the test. He wasn't aggressive toward the Borneo loach. He didn't have any illness. He didn't have any infections. There was no parasites. He was good to go and he's looking great. And I can't wait to take those cinematics later because I know you guys love watching them and I love making them. So um, I do have some kind of worries with putting the electric blue Akara in there. 
Number one, I guess the biggest one, the biggest one, he's gonna get massive. He's gonna get huge. Uh, he, he might be eight inches if it's a boy, maybe like five, six inches if it's a girl. I, I've done a little bit of research, you know, it varies, but the fear with that is he's gonna be so big that he might start seeing other fish as food. That's sort of a worry of mine. Now the rainbow fish are gonna be at three inches each, which is pretty big, and the males especially have a very tall body. So I, th I think they'll be okay. Also, I've read reports on forums that if you keep them in the same tank with smaller fish from the beginning while they're small, then they don't bother the other small fish they're used to. Regardless, you know, we're gonna upgrade to a 75 gallon anyways, right guys, right? Right? You gotta convince my dad though. <laughs> Leave your comments telling my dad to get, to allow me to get a 75 gallon aquarium because I mean, come on, come on. So on the topic of eating tank mates, um, that's kind of why I don't have shrimp in there anymore. Like I pulled all the shrimp and I put them in here because there's just so many micro predators in there. So we're gonna have ghost shrimp in here, we might have cherry shrimp in here later. Uh, Borneo loach is gonna be the only fish in here for a while. Then we might do platies or endlers or something like that. We're gonna do a fish store tour later, kind of skip out some options with Zach, you know? So anyways, on the topic of him eating other fish, he's gonna eat shrimp probably. So we kept the shrimp in here. We're only ever gonna have shrimp in here probably from now on. Uh, but he was eating snails. I told you guys that in the last video, all the trumpet snails disappeared into the sand and all the pond snails, like, like I think except for one, which is hanging on to the edge of the glass right now on the top because he's probably trying to get away from the cichlid, um, is a pond snail. What am I saying? Anyways, so the snails in here pretty much all eaten. So chances are he's gonna control the population of the 40 gallon, which is probably a good thing so long as he doesn't over overdo it, you know? Because let's face it, we have way too many pink ram's horn snails in there. And I was selling them off a lot and I was making a lot of money off of them, but eventually everyone else has pink ram's horn snails and nobody wants them. So hopefully he's gonna control the population and uh, not eat the fish. <laughs> then after that, we're gonna get a bunch more rainbow fish. We're gonna fill it with uh, neon rainbow fish uh, from the fish store. Hopefully they still have them in stock at a cheap price. And then we're gonna have the electric blue car in there Cooley loaches, again, hoping he doesn't go after the cooley loaches. I really love those cooley loaches. I hope we still see them a lot. Uh, hopefully also the plants grow in the 40 gallon a lot, like they're growing in this 10 gallon. Just awesome growth in this 10 gallon for um, everything about the stem plants, pretty much. So I really hope that you guys are looking forward to these new videos, because I cannot wait to put more fish in the 40 gallon, switch out my options, you know, see what kind of shrimp we can put in this 10 gallon, see what exotic fish are at my local fish store, and let you guys see it too. Maybe gudgeons, maybe killifish, stuff like that. Let me know what you guys wanna see in the comments and I'm gonna clean this 10 gallon now. One more thing that I forgot to tell you guys about is cichlids are known diggers. So I'm a little worried about that. My substrate isn't that thick. So hopefully he doesn't just tear up my plants, but that's kind of why we didn't get two. That's kind of why we didn't get a pair because we don't want the aggression from it and we don't want the nesting behaviors. Okay, you guys can see that I forgot to turn the in-tank filter off in here, and it's actually really powerful. Like one time I forgot to turn it off, and I brought the water level probably down to like here, and it was just spraying up at me like mad, and I didn't know what to do, and I wasn't smart enough to unplug the filter, so I just got completely soaked. But uh, anyways, this is a really good filter. Don't let me forget to do a review on it, because it's a really good filter, and I really recommend it, and it's great for these kind of tanks. But anyways, let's uh, take this bucket out to my trees. As we're passing by here on the 40 gallon, why did my rainbow fish never come out? I think I just need more rainbow fish and better plants. Anyways, so uh, trying to keep floating plants from getting sucked underneath the filter. And I think I finally figured it out. I had this extra PVC tubing and I just put it around both in-tank uh, tubes and that keeps all the plants from getting sucked in. So now I might actually be able to get rid of the hornwort because the only reason I had hornwort in the first place is because, well, it was free. <laughs> I'm always gonna take a free plant, you guys know me. Um, but also because it's the only f uh, floating plant that wouldn't get sucked in by these hang on back filters. But now I that I have this PVC tube method, I might be able to put water lettuce and sylvania and, uh, and frog bit and stuff like that in this tank and just something that doesn't shed needles everywhere and doesn't die all the time. Wait, what the heck is that? Do you guys see that? Those little white dots? I have no idea what that is. Oh, it's sand. That's a big rip. I must have put sand in when I put in the cichlid. Uh-oh. <laughs> 
Never gonna get that out now. So as you guys can see out here, it is a beautiful day once again in Canada. I, I'm generalizing all of Canada right now in Ontario, lower Ontario, <laughs> Eastern Ontario, I guess. And you can just see, look at this. Look at this apple tree. How beautiful is that? But we're gonna water our little apple trees instead. Like that is so nice. Anyways, so this apple tree is doing great. Uh, these little pine trees, not so much. Looks like we got some browning. And this little apple tree, not doing great. Looks like it hasn't even budded yet. That's too bad. Look at the flowers on this though. Oh my goodness, I love apple trees. <gasps> we got a honeybee. So cute. The unfortunate things about apple trees is they go from all these beautiful flowers with honeybees just covering them to uh, rotting apples on the ground with wasps covering them. So I'm not gonna water the rhubarb plant this time because it's so huge. Like it's probably doubled in size again since the last time I showed you guys. But look at this weird thing on it. I didn't know that rhubarb plants had flowers, but that's, I guess they do. That's pretty weird, eh? That's so weird. It feels like corn, like a corn's sheath, kind of, but weird. Look at that. it again look at how beautiful these floating plants are and what I love about them is they're just so resilient like I can push this one underwater and not only will it float back up but it's got little hairs on it that push off the water like how cool is that another cool thing for you guys who don't have floating plants is when they have enough energy to reproduce they shoot off a little stem to the side and they just make a new plant and they create like a whole flotilla, uh, a whole navy, if you will, of floating plants. And this is Big Mama right here. This is the mother of all floating plants, at least in my tank. And although it's an absolute mess right now, you can see what I was talking about where the floating plants cover up the, uh, the cuts on that driftwood back there. And you can actually see the mother pond snail coming back as well. It's like they know that there's no predators in and now that they're just they're just gonna completely take over the tank once more. Anyways, enough fawning <laughs> over my floating plants. Uh, now we're just gonna give a quarter cup full of, uh, of fertilizer. Again, we're just using Flourish. Not the best fertilizer, but it's all we have here. And that'll just help to supplement the plants need. And it's mostly got potassium, iron, and sulfur, in case you guys are interested in it. All right, now lastly, as always, we cook up some bloodworms for them. Don't, don't actually cook them. <laughs> Anyways, so we're gonna feed them some bloodworms just to chill them out. And, uh, oh my gosh, look at all of this, or not frog bit, duckweed. I swear, by, by the end of this week, by the next video, this entire tank, is gonna be covered in duckweed. Anyways, so I'm going to feed these guys bloodworms. I'm gonna clean off the duckweed from my arms and I'm gonna get some awesome, awesome cinematic shots for you guys. I hope you enjoy that. If you guys did like this video, leave a like. If you guys wanna see more like this, subscribe and I'll see you next Sunday. <laughs>